and welcome back to Cappuccino with Amber. We're here for another episode, and we have... Stefano. And... The Guru. So get excited, because we have a bunch of new topics. So if you're planning ahead for winter vacations, there's a great spot in eastern Germany. It's called the Haars Mountains. And what makes it even more interesting is that the way that you can get up the mountains is through this steam railway. It's called the Trans Haars. And what you do is that you can get on this railway and it takes you all the way up the mountain towards the Brocken Peak. Now the Brocken Peak is around 3,800 feet up, so it's the highest peak in the mountain range. And people who have gone this range, they say that they've seen, you know, everything. They've seen lynxes roaming around, they've seen the snow, they've seen the ice. It looks like, a, you know, like a wonderland, like kind of like a, um, like a winter wonderland, you know? That sounds really cool. Not like Alice, though. <laughs> Not like Alice, you know, because you don't have like the crazy cat, but you know. <laughs> lynxes, though. Yeah, the lynx. <laughs> okay, so maybe you do. <laughs> So, I don't know about you guys, but do y'all love like those artificial intelligence movies? Oh, I yeah. find them kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I like them, so... I do too, I think they're so cool. Well, apparently, like, that's actually happening. Researchers have actually created artificial intelligence. So, hopefully they don't take over the world. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. I don't want another iRobot situation. Oh my gosh, that would be scary, oh, yeah. right? Oh, well, so apparently they're going to be called virtual actors, and they're actually going to have thoughts, and they're going to be, you know, even developing emotions like actual people. Yeah, I heard about that, how, like, whenever they're trying to, they try to make these artificial intelligences to where it's, they act like human minds, so mm -hmm. you know how whenever you have actions, they, um, the reactions to them are emotional, and then you can develop, you know, different bonds between people, so yeah. that's how you develop trust or loyalty, exactly. you know, other, you know, like, bonds like that. Exactly, so, you know, just like as humans, you know, for every action that we have has some kind of reaction, good, bad, one of the two. Let's hope they don't turn against the human race. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I also have to add something to this. So there was a company called Voucher Codes Pro, okay. and what they did is they had a survey of around they took around 2,800 Brits who were 18 years old and they asked them this question. They asked if they would want to date, you know, a cyborg, if they would be willing to go on a date with a robot, what and a heck? third of people said they would. Uh, a third what? would. <laughs> it's actually not surprising because also in Japan they have, you know, that how they have video games? Well, they have virtual girlfriend video games, kind of like what you were talking oh, about, how they're going to be making the AI into a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, maybe in like 50 years, we're gonna be at like weddings and it's well, going Stefano, to Well, Stefano, do you, would you marry a computer? Personally, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need that like human face interaction. <laughs> Me too. Same. I don't understand how people would do that. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, it's like in 50 years, we're probably gonna have like a person at the altar and then we're gonna have like a, a monitor. Robot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah monitor. like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> a gaming disc or something. <laughs> or 50 years, we probably won't even have discs. It's probably be like some super electrical, technical setup, whatever it is, right. like in yeah. the air. New Wi-Fi or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about Hollywood buzz a lot, but I know some of you guys want to hear some of the Hollywood secrets. So a lot of the Hollywood people, you know they have perfect skin, perfect hair, yeah. perfect everything, you know, so-called. Well, one of their secrets, actually, is that they use coconut oil. For a lot of their things, they use coconut oil for their hair. It glosses it, makes it shiny. They use coconut okay. oil even for their teeth, yeah. which whitens it. You know, you can eat coconut oil. It actually is supposedly supposed to make your metabolism higher. Mm -hmm. And it's just healthy oh, okay. overall. You can use it as a substitute for butter, something, you know, more healthy than butter. Um, cooking, anything really. It's just coconut oil, coconut oil, coconut oil for everything if you want to look like an actor. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking about that, but yeah, coconut oil is actually really healthy for you in many different ways. It really is. Um, I mean, uh, Blake Lively uses it, mm -hmm. Kourtney Kardashian uses it, Miranda Kerr, Miranda Kerr. she's so pretty, I, I believe she's, she's pretty, she yeah. uses it. I mean, it's just crazy how many people use it, so yeah. use it. Um, so, are, are you guys like strapped for cash at all? Like, in any way? A little bit. You know, I'm a college student, so... Yeah. Nah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you're not, if you want to make a little extra money, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Unfortunately, you have to live in Britain to do it. Oh my god. Because most of these okay. are British sites. Um, but the internet is crazy amazing. You can do anything on the internet, basically. Yes. Um, make lots of money, yes. for instance. Um, let's say you're a super organized person. Right? Not me. <laughs> oh, that is right up my alley. Perfect. So you're great at keeping time, you're great at making lists. Nope. <laughs> That's, <Yes>. definitely, <laughs> That's definitely me as well. Well, you could be a virtual assistant. Oh, okay. Yes. How much do they make? They make quite a bit. Um, I don't remember the numbers. So. As long as it's money, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah <laughs> they, make, they can make a lot of money. Um, I don't know if it could be like a full-time job, but if you need some extra money, it's a great way to do that. Okay. Um, so this one won't apply to you guys, but if you've got uh, some designer handbags laying around that you don't use... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you never know. Could happen. But uh, again, in Britain, if you've got some designer handbags laying around, you can put those, you can, you know, register them on a site and rent your hand back out to someone. You know, that's absolutely crazy. I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to do that for any of my expensive things. Right. Rent it out, you know. I feel like if I give anything out or rent it out, I'd never get it back. Same. I know. So I, I don't know what their collateral or security that is for that. I'm sure they have something put in place. But I mean, it's mm -hmm. Britain versus America. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it yeah, so it's definitely, it's going to be a different, different culture for sure. Um, maybe one of you guys is really good at hosting dinner parties or just, you know, events in general. You can also find something online for that as well, meaning you can go out and you know tell people your experience, you know what you've done in the past, and uh, people can hire you to host dinner parties. Um, even if you're you know good in the kitchen, you know you can you know uh, provide someone with some cooking service as well. Hmm. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. You can also do things like you can rent your car, as in. Not like Uber or Lyft or anything where you drive people around. No, if you don't use your car that often, you can put it on a website and someone will book your car to drive it. I wonder what the legality between those things are. Actually, right. Though. I mean, maybe maybe the laws over in Britain are a lot, you know, more lazy fare versus you know America. They might be. They might be. I'm not really sure, but I mean... Oh yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You know, yeah. I know a lot of people with like a spare car in the garage that they don't use very much. Yeah. Oh yeah, if it were legal, I would be totally down with that. Right. <laughs> yeah, it'd right. be like a, you know, a step above Uber, you know, just go ahead and take my car. Right. Yeah. It's just, being in Texas, there's everything is so far away, I have to drive. I can't walk anywhere. Exactly. Also, it's way too hot. <laughs> For real, right now, I'm sweating even in this room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you can also, um, oh, you could also... This is, this is something that I could definitely do. You could be a homesitter, meaning when people go away on vacation, you can go stay in their house for... Oh, you know, I'm sure you can do that in America. Yeah, you can do... I mm. actually think you can. I feel like these Brits really trust people. It seems like it, yeah. Yeah, just on a website, oh, come home, sit in my house, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. But I feel like, I feel like, like you said before, there's probably, there have to be safeguards. There have to be, you know, people have to get checked out, like background checks, things like that. Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, so if you, you know, you need a little extra money, check out some of these sites. You might, you know, some of them you might actually be able to do, even if, you know, you're here in the States. So what's been in the news recently is this new game called Pokemon Go. Yep. Oh, you guys have definitely heard about it, everybody's right? Everybody's heard about it. I mean, everybody I encounter is either playing it or doesn't play it, but they know about it. Yeah, you know? I, just, I just had dinner with a friend and they had their phone out on the table so they could watch for Pokemon. Yeah, I was at a shop the other day and it was apparently a Pokestop or something like that. Yeah. And people yeah. were like, do, do, do. <laughs> you know, and they weren't even in the store to buy anything and they were just yeah. there. The same with me, because I was walking down the street one day, and there was this person, they were almost going to run into me, and then like, I had to evade them, and then I just looked over my shoulder, and I'm like, Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty crazy. Pokemon Go really is taking over, you know, nowadays. It, it really is, you know, and it's, I mean, as, as, nice as, it is, as nice as it is, because it is bringing people together, it's kind of becoming an issue. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I really like the concept of the game. The concept of the game is to, hey, get the kids out, get the people out, get some exercise and walk around. But the thing is, people are actually taking it the wrong way because they're on, they're, they're driving and they're doing it. Instead yeah. of walking, people are driving and playing Pokemon. It's dangerous. I mean, there was even a wreck that I heard about. I believe mm -hmm. it was like a, a pileup that yeah. actually killed some people because some guy stopped in the middle of the road just to catch a Pokemon. Yeah, they have to start making PSAs about, you know, you know how they have like the, you know, no drinking and driving. Now it's, don't Pokemon go and drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, honestly, I mean, really, that's, it's that serious, I it, think. It it's, really it's is. It's a great game. I mean, I personally don't play it. Um, I love Pokemon, but it's it's not move-based for me, and I don't feel like it's like Pokemon. It's just like catching Pokemon for me. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of people, everywhere I go, they're playing it. It brings people together. I mean, it brings people to parks, walking around, but everybody's still stuck on their phone. No, so yeah. I have mixed feelings about no, it. No, me too. You know, speaking of a lot of that, you know, people, you know, you know, uh, on their phones and driving, um, the Holocaust Museum actually has had to make a lot of announcements. I mean, this game hasn't even been out that long. They've had to make several announcements about this. Yeah, it's been, people, it's been up since, like, what? July 3rd? I think Sometime so. Sometime last week, I know yeah. that. Yeah, it's so crazy it, how big it is now. I know, it's, it's, it's huge, but yeah, the Holocaust Museum has had to make several announcements asking people to not play this game in the museum because it's incredibly disrespectful. It really is disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things that they did advertise before Pokemon Go is that they would put it at, you know, um, sites where sites that you have to go see. Yeah. And I didn't really think about it. At first, I was like, okay, that's a really that's really good. So people yeah. can go out and see it. But honestly, they're just going there for the Pokemon, exactly. and not actually, you know, respecting it. First of all, exactly. And, uh, taking a look at what's Were, there. Weren't people also going to a memorial? Did yeah, you there was um, Rosa Parks's memorial site. People yeah. were going to that as well, and they were just crowding around it. I'm not sure what exactly was there, but you know, it is disrespectful to be there just you know, yeah. just for Pokemon. a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, and it does. So, you know, it sounds like we are bashing this game. We really aren't. We really are. I mean, you the know? game has an amazing concept. I it love does. the concept. I love their, you know, the meaning behind it. They want people yeah. to go out. And exactly. Do stuff. I've already seen several pictures of people, you know, you know, so, you know, promoting the fact that they've met so many new friends and they've made so many new acquaintances just from this one app. Like, that's amazing. That's yeah, really that cool. is really cool. But you know, with every good thing comes, you know, a negative side to it. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you control what you do when you do it because it can be dangerous not only for you but for other people exactly and also exactly. disrespectful so i mean if your pokemon get and going you know i don't know what you want to call it but don't drive while you're doing it and uh if you haven't watched our teen show we talk about you know being on the phone and driving it's very dangerous but um yeah just make sure that you be careful enjoy pokemon go i mean i might mm -hmm. play it one day right now i'm not stefano oh yeah i i'm totally addicted to yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> might teach me some tricks and tips you know a couple like what is it called Pikachu's or something. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, just make sure you be safe when you do it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys follow basketball. I, mean, I do. I grew up watching it. So, um, and this was this was really heartbreaking for me. But on Monday, Tim Duncan announced his retirement. Oh yeah, he played for the Spurs, right? Yep, San Antonio oh, that's Spurs. That's so sad. I know he played for them for so many years, and he was such an amazing player. He has it's, five rings, right? Five rings. Oh, it's yeah, so just cool. Yeah, just as much as Kobe does, but he doesn't get as much exposure. I mean, it's no, crazy. he doesn't. It's because it's because Tim just he doesn't really talk in front of the cameras. He likes to just you know play his games, you know, be the best player that he can be, and then go home and live his life. Did he say why he retired? Or is that just um, he hasn't came out and said why yet? Yeah, he hasn't come out and said why yet. Um, there was a, a conference today, actually. That's a lie, it's Tuesday. There's a conference on Tuesday, actually, where his coach, Greg Popovic, came out and talked a little bit about it. So, I mean, was it like out of the blue? Because, I mean, normally mm -hmm. the sports people, you know, I yeah. don't want to, <laughs> not sports people, <laughs> our athletes, I can't believe I said that, our athletes normally give us, you know, a kind of a beforehand notice before they, they retire. They do, yeah, they And there's really normally build-up and people, you know, know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, you know, everyone tries, everyone tries to give some kind of, you know, hint that they're going to retire, and he did actually about oh, two. Oh, he did? Yeah, two years ago, he said um, after he won the championship that he was going to retire for good, but mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if this was because he wasn't ready to retire or if he just, you know, he wanted to. He just enjoyed the game, I mean, honestly. Right. But I mean, he played an extra two years. Yeah, right? he did. He, he played for an extra two years, and it seems like now he's 
ready. He's ready to just be done. He's ready to, you know, finish. I mean, basketball yeah, the man's and... 40 years old and still playing basketball. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty old for a basketball player. It seems like it, but I think I think he's I think he's just really going to be happy with what he's with his choice. I believe so. Five rings, man. Right. <laughs> So recently I just came back from Puerto Rico, as you can see from my tan, <laughs> but um, going to Puerto Rico I had to endure a five hour flight. Now that was excruciating as it already is, yeah. but at least I was going somewhere, right? I heard about some plane in the UK, yeah. was it? Yeah. They went somewhere, They're, they were going somewhere, six hour flight, and the plane had to turn back around. Yeah. So mm -hmm. 12 hours wasted for absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a British Airways flight, and the passengers were going to be, it was actually an 11-hour flight to Tokyo. Um, and they, everything was set to go, they were going to go, and it was going to be great. Um, and they got about halfway through their flight, about six hours in, over, I think it's northern Siberia? Yeah, northern Siberia. Yeah, when the flight crew detected a minor technical malfunction. And they said, you know what, we're not going to risk it, we're just going to go back. So they turned the plane around and went back. You know, I wonder, six hours there, mm -hmm. six hours back, what about going to Tokyo instead? Right. You know? Yeah, they originally, I know on a tracking website online, they said that they one of the plans that they had was that they were going to um, divert to Helsinki in Finland, mm -hmm. but then they just decided to go straight back to London because of a minor technical difficulty. That yeah. is crazy. Minor yeah. technical difficulty. Well, I mean, it's understandable because if something happens and it becomes a major, you know, malfunction, a lot of people could die. That is true. And I know also that one way the British Airways did sort of make it better is that they offered free lodging in the airport hotels and then mm. the next day they gave um, everyone who was on that flight um, flights back to Tokyo. Yeah, I mean that does kind of help, but at the same time it's like it was on a 6,000 mile flight to nowhere. Yeah. Nothing really. is gonna, nothing I mean, seems to really... Six hours of my time is a lot, 12 hours of my time is even more and I went nowhere. Plus I had to, you know, you'd had to stay at the hotel and waste yeah. another day. You know, business people go on airplanes all the time to go places. Yeah, they said that they could have risked up to 300,000 pounds because of people that might have lawsuits with them. Or not even lawsuits, just about the fact that, you know, they had to provide lodging. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, six hours there, six hours back. I'm just really curious as to why they didn't just fly, you know, finish the flight. Mm -hmm. Wonder if that would have been shorter or longer. Or what? Yeah. But. I think it's I think it's like you said, you know, just sometimes, you know, those minor, you know, technical fun you know, malfunctions can sometimes turn into bigger things. So I guess maybe. they didn't have, you know, a fixing place over there or a repair shop for planes over in Tokyo. Maybe. But, yeah, I feel sorry for those guys. Right. So this has been Cappuccino with Amber. I'm Kelly. I'm Stefano. And I'm the guru. Keep watching American Bollywood TV for more.